Okay, today we're gonna do an oil change on a 2018 Axis A24. This is the PCM 410 motor, which is the exact same as the 450, it's just a different tune. So if you have a 450, it's literally the exact same. Um, things you'll need are, I think, a few socket wrenches. I think we're gonna use a 16 just to take out the drain plug, because you gotta use the drain plug to um, drain your oil from the pan. Uh, a few different tools, and then some socket wrenches. I use an oil pump because it makes it three or four hours quicker than just letting it slow drain. Um, if you don't have a pump, just run your engine first hand, heat up the oil, and it will slowly drain out just from, from gravity. You can also tilt your trailer a little bit to help it uh, actually fall back. Uh, so this engine takes a 15W40 for anyone over 50 degrees, which is ooh, hopefully everybody. Um, I always forget which quart. It depends because you don't always get all of it every time. So uh, normally I'll do anywhere above five quarts, five to five and a half. Um, sometimes it's just that. Uh, and then their filter, which you'll always want to change every time you change your oil. Um, STP is the only one that they sell. I prefer the Frams just because they have like a grip on them, but STP works as well. Either way, you're going to want a pH 8 a or stp s8a or just any of these that match you can get the pcm one um and i'll throw that on the on the video but they're so expensive and there's really no point to it so save yourself some money um the main thing is these engines pcm does suggest that you change your oil and your impeller every 50 hours just do it don't argue with it just do it they know what they're talking about and it the amount of performance you put on these engines like you need to change them every 50. okay so like i said this is a 409 450 is the same engine it's literally the same camshaft it's the same displacement same internals all the mechanical parts the same it just has a different ecm tune so i mean if you can go find that tune then you can technically turn a 409 into a 450 which is eventually my plan once i run out of warranty but to change the oil you're gonna have to take off this side bay this side bay this one's super easy, you just pull these and then you take these two screws out here. And then we'll be able to get to the filter. We'll be able to get to the oil hose that's down on the drip pan. We're gonna go ahead and pull the belt off because I always do the oil and the impeller every 50 hours together. They're super, super simple. We'll walk through all that. Okay, we've got our housing off, um, which basically there's one bolt on top. One bolt on top, there's two flatheads that you can use a finger grip on or an actual flathead. Um, and then you can access the the drive belt right there. Uh, the cool thing is you can access everything. Here's your water impeller right here. Super easy, we'll get to that in a second. Here is your drain hose for your oil, which is goes all the way back down into the oil pan, down on the very bottom of the block. Um, obviously your filter. Cool thing about taking this off, it's only these two. Make sure you don't lose these little prongs. These happen to fall out a lot of times and you're screwed if it does, because that's where the thread goes into. Uh, and then whenever you actually look at your little um, plastic protector thing, uh, you can see where the belt should go. So make sure you bear in mind what the belt direction should be at whenever you're putting it all back together. Also, this is all your information um, about the engine itself. So recommended oil, the firing order, all that kind of stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to take this and then we're gonna run it down through the drain hole at the very end of the transom and stick it out the other side and then I'm going to go and uh, start sucking all the oil out. So this hose originally came with a clamp that was on it. It was like a pinned off clamp from the factory. I just went ahead and cut that because it didn't fit through the hole and then I replaced it with just a screw on clamp. Uh, and so I take that screw on clamp off and I'm able to fit it perfectly through the hole. But with that original factory one, it's not gonna fit. So don't be afraid to cut it off. You can always just use an aftermarket one. That's totally fine. Okay, as you can see, come back through, just barely fits. I mean, like, just at it. And then I've got it sucking out, and that should take 30 minutes or so. If you run your boat before, heat up the engine to, you know, full, full temperature, which is about 160 degrees. That'll get your oil flowing pretty quick. And then we're gonna go back down in there, and I even have the boat jacked up a bit so that it starts flowing out a little easier. Okay, so using a 15 millimeter socket, actually in the uh, reverse direction, so you're going to go um, counterclockwise here, or sorry, no, you're going to go uh, clockwise because the tensioner itself goes in a counterclockwise position. So normally you would tighten, this time you're going the opposite way. 
and you're just gonna put it on that tensioner pulley you know, pull back in a clockwise rotation and then you'll be able to uh, slip the belt off there and it'll loosen the tension so you can start working on your impeller okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and take off the oil filter so it gives me more room to reach my uh, water and impeller housing and uh, it's super easy seriously this is super super simple to do um, I actually made my own little collection because there's about a quart there's about one quart that's gonna be in here and uh, so I just slip this little bucket <clears throat> and then go ahead and loosen it some people use a bag and stuff but that works fine for me okay oil filter is off we're gonna put a new one on after we finish with this so this is your water uh, internal water pump housing the beautiful thing about PCM is they designed this with holes that you can access the mounting bolts there's three of them that go right up against the actual block and into the uh, the water coolant and um, so you don't have to like move anything you don't have to undo other hoses so you can access it right here and literally I can get this done in three minutes if that uh, so we're gonna go ahead and use a 10 millimeter socket go straight through and you just start undoing it and you do that for all three you do not have to have this over tightened okay everyone thinks you have to over tighten it you really don't have to it actually has little rubber gaskets on there to make sure you that you don't strip the bolt um, it doesn't have to be super tight just taut that's fine all right all of our screws are loose there's also a uh, a rubber washer on the inside which prevents these from coming out all the way now if you yank on it of course the the washer will break free of the threads there so the idea is just so that you don't lose these and you don't drop them down into your build somewhere that would suck um, I'm gonna try and do this with one hand what I do because they're all undone is you just kind of wiggle it and then I like to turn it while I'm pulling it out kind of at an angle so it stays so that the actual impeller stays on the shaft there we go now PCM recommends that you change this every 50 hours I inspect it every 50 I may not necessarily change it if there's no like gashes in it but uh, just inspect it every 50 it, it's that easy to get to there's no reason why you should say you're too lazy to inspect it because if for whatever reason it does go out and I've had that happen before on other boats like you're screwed you do not want pieces of rubber all inside your water system and then getting stuck into the filter that's up in there and eventually going through your lifters and all this kind of stuff like that would be awful so just inspect it and then whenever you do put it back in I'm actually gonna put uh, silicone spray on it that will keep it lubricated because there's no water flushing into it and help it go in uh, pretty easily for the first time you could put it in dry but it's just gonna risk it tearing quicker and also make sure you note which way that this is rotating if you do put a new one in and you're rotating it the opposite way I mean it, it will correct it but you just want to go in the right way so for this one it's going in a clockwise pattern facing the block all right so before I put this in I put some kind of um, lubricant on it this is made actually for um, just any kind of silicone spray that it's it's not combustible so it's fine you can put it in there and it's not going to damage any of your internal system but it just keeps this lubricated for whenever you first put it in so you can spin it in easily and before water actually gets sucked up into the housing uh, it, it keeps it <clears throat> lubricated because you don't want a, a dry rubber thing. it's just gonna dry rot this is the box that will come in if you get a new one this is the actual part the impeller kit so Romeo Papa Oscar 61022 um, that is the impeller for this specific engine whenever it comes in you'll get the impeller uh, you'll get the gasket and you'll get those little rubber washers those little rubber ones like I said go in the inside of here see right there just like that holds it in place and then the gasket itself will go inside there along the rim this is in good shape so I'm not gonna change it I'm just gonna keep my spare just in case and then I'm gonna go ahead and put it in rotating clockwise so I just spun it back in went in clockwise went really easily these do actually line up it's not a direct triangle it's actually a little bit off so if you're putting trying to put one in and the other one doesn't line up and you're like wait what did I do wrong it there actually are specific screws that are supposed to go in specific ones they're not all the exact same uh, gaps between them so for whatever reason one's not going in then just rotate the entire housing again keep it going clockwise until they actually do line up okay that's back on went ahead and just hand tightened them again you really don't have to over tighten it uh, we're gonna go ahead and put the belt back and then I always always check and make sure that all the grooves are aligned 
Um, I've seen some before where like this will be off just by a little bit and as it goes through it starts hitting on the side of stuff and I've seen belts just literally torn into shreds and seen the bilge area just completely shredded with belts. So make sure it's all lined up on the grooves, on the grooves. The only ones that don't is this obviously on the back side. It doesn't have grooves but make sure it's it's flush in the middle and then also coming off the main block make sure that is also flush in the middle and then we'll put it back on your tightener and um, then we can start working on our oil filter. All right, so I went ahead and put a quart in here. It holds about a quart. And always fill it up before you screw it in. Like, don't let it fill with what you put in the block because then it's going to drain your block, number one. Um, and it's actually running it on a little bit dry. So go ahead and fill it pretty much to the rim. Uh, and always put some around the gasket here so it doesn't strip while you're putting it on. Again, this you really do not have to over tighten. Like, you don't, you don't want to tear that gasket. Uh, whenever I go ahead and drain it, which it's still draining out, I take the cap off just to let the, um, the pressure drop so it can drain a little bit better. We're gonna go ahead and screw this back on in. Got the pulley back on, it's all tight. And then we're gonna fill it with um, around four quarts in the block and then a quart here and we'll check the dipstick and see where it's at. Okay, so I went ahead, that's got one quart in it. That I put like three and a half. I'm gonna put some more in, but I just wanted to see where it's at. And check the dipstick. I'm letting it run for a couple minutes just to flush everything through. And then we'll let it turn off, we'll let it settle for a second, we'll check. We'll probably need to add another half a quart in the actual block, but this should be five quarts, or sometimes a little over. Very important that you check the belt, make sure everything's lined up well, make sure it's all looking good and tight. And uh, that's that's pretty much it. We're gonna, we're gonna put a little bit more in if we need some. All right, so that's four quarts in there, just at, just about. One quart in there, so right about five. We're good, just check the switch. We're right where we should be on the in the middle of the add or don't over add. So we're gonna go ahead and put the cover back on here. It's got two little prongs down here that just like the rubber just slides up in. I find a lot of times I have to hold it because the little rubber piece falls out if not. And then it just clamps on and screws down on the top. Checked all of our belts, we checked everything else. We are pretty much good. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much changing oil on the PCM 409, 450. Uh, the only thing that I would add is always be sure to um, check and make sure that you run the motor afterwards, all the oil drips down, then check the stick, and then add if you need to. Whenever you run the oil, always use a fake lake plugged up to the bottom of the boat and check your exhaust from where the risers go down. For these models, there's typically only one exhaust, and if you have the um, uh, surf pipe it'll be even different on the back but always make sure that water is pouring out of there constantly just to make sure that water's flowing through but yeah that's pretty much it any questions you can leave them in the comments below